Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 8.0. And as the name suggests, this is an 8-inch tablet. This slots beneath the 10.1-inch tablet, which is the Galaxy Note 10.1. Uh, and above the Galaxy Note 2, which is a 5.5-inch phone. Now, the interesting thing with the 8.0 is that it's available in two versions. If you get the cellular version, you actually have a phone. So you have an earpiece and everything uh, in addition to cellular data. So you have cellular voice and data in a tablet. Uh, now, I have the Wi-Fi version here, which is 16 gig. You can also get a 32 gig. This is also available in black or white and starts you off at a fairly hefty $399 for a mid-range tablet. A lot of these tablets kind of come in around the 200 to 329 price points, like the iPad mini at the top end, 329 So this is kind of pricey, but you do get some interesting features and certainly a lot of software features. Now in terms of specs, we have an 8-inch display with a resolution of 1280 by 800. That's good for 189 pixels per inch. Now something like the Nexus 7 is a little higher at 216 ppi, but that's a smaller tablet, 7 versus 8 inches. Now this is better than the iPad mini, which has a pixel density of 163 ppi, so 160 63, 189, and 216. So this is fairly average for mid-sized tablets. So we have a 5.5 millimeter S Pen, which uses Wacom technology. So it's not simply a capacitive stylus. This is using a very different technology, which is proximity wear, pressure sensitive, and a bunch of other things. So for example, you can't just take this S Pen and use it on your iPad, it won't work. Uh, so we also have a five megapixel autofocusing camera, which is good for 720p video recording. We also have a 1.3 megapixel front face camera. So we also have an IR LED blaster for controlling your home theater equipment. They also include a remote control. We've seen this before with other Samsung tablets. We're running Android 4.1.2 at the time of launch. Hopefully they'll update this to a newer version of Android soon. We have a quad-core 1.6 gigahertz Exynos processor, 2 gigs of internal RAM. Of course this can play full HD 1080p video. And we have a 4600 milliamp battery. Alright, so let's just crack the seal. Lift the lid. All right, so there we go, the Galaxy Note 8.0. As you can see, I have the white version here. So we have a little tab here to lift it up. And there is our tablet. Looks like it's wrapped in just a little bit of plastic here. And we'll set this aside for just a moment and we'll take a look at the contents. So inside we get this very eco-friendly packaging, very different from what I've seen before. Uh, so it's kind of, kind of got this brown coloring. It doesn't look very appealing, but it is more eco-friendly. So we have our white USB micro USB charging cable here. So again, use this micro USB instead of a proprietary cable like we've seen with other full-size Samsung tablets. Uh, this is a fairly large battery, 4600 milliamps, so it's not gonna be a quick charge with micro USB. Uh, but at least you don't have to worry about proprietary cables. We also have our power adapter here, Samsung USB power adapter, wrapped in plastic, Samsung branding. We also have some literature here, again, eco-friendly, Samsung 8.0 quick start guide. We have our gift to you, which is register your Galaxy device and receive a special offer from Samsung. Uh, Galaxy Note 8.0 accessory guide, so you can purchase accessories like a keyboard, another S Pen with an eraser, I don't know what that is. All Share Cast Hub, uh, which is a sort of a media streaming hub for your TV. Uh, Galaxy Note 8.0, some other information here, and Health, Safety, and Warranty Guide. All right, so let's get back to the Note 8.0 and peel off all this plastic here. So we have a little tab up here, lift that. There you go, there is our screen. Gotta love that sound. All right, so with all the plastic removed, we can take a close look around the design of this tablet. So this is very familiar if you're used to uh, Samsung devices. So we have this plastic design, a uh, very glossy back panel, uh, and uh, it's actually similar in design to the Galaxy S4 uh, without that uh, sort of texture on the back. Uh, but it's got a similar sort of more angular design toward the edge, so you get a little more surface area to grab onto the edge, which I like, as opposed to the more tapered design. Uh, again, very slippery design. Uh, this is non-removable, so you have a sealed internal battery. You can't really pop this off, uh, at least easily. It's not something you're going to do uh, frequently. But along the back, you see our 5 megapixel autofocusing camera, which does not have an LED flash. Uh, again, uh, records video at 720p. Along the side, we have a microphone, our sleep-wake button, our power-on button, our volume rocker, as well as our IR blaster, which, as you can see, and this is meant to be used in this orientation when you're controlling your remote control devices. You also have your S Pen here, which pops right out. There you go. Slides in, so it's nice and neat. You have your speakers here. Now, these are very tiny speakers, stereo speakers. We also have a micro USB port for charging. 
Uh, again, we have a uh, fairly large battery, so micro USB isn't the best way to charge, but at least it isn't proprietary, so you can use any micro USB cable. You also have your micro SD card slot, which holds uh, 64 gig uh, SD cards, so you can expand storage up to 64 gigs beyond what's internal. Up here, you find your headphone jack, and that's about all there is to it. So let's take a look at the front. You have our Samsung branding here with our front-facing camera as well as an ambient light sensor. Now again, if you had the cellular version, you'd actually have an earpiece right here. Along the bottom, we'll find our standard Samsung Android controls. So you have your menu button, your home button, and your back button. Uh, and these have multi-uses depending on long presses and that sort of thing. And we'll demonstrate that. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time. I'm just going to hold that power button. You get that familiar Samsung boot animation with the sound. And this does have a vibration motor in here, so you actually feel the, um, the vibration when it starts up. So we're going to select English, United States by default. And we're going to click Next. Now we got to connect to my Wi-Fi network, so I'm just going to enter in my password. Now we can sign into our Samsung account, which I already have, so let me go ahead and do that. You can also create one. Now I'm just going to go ahead and sign into my Google account, which will transfer my calendars, bookmarks, email, my YouTube account, everything will just appear on my device without having to log in individually for each thing. So we're going to click Next. Now Dropbox also has a 50 gig promotion with Samsung products. So you can create a new Dropbox account or you can sign into your existing account and it will add 50 gigs of free storage for two years. So let's go ahead. I already have an account and log in. So let's go ahead and take a look at the user interface starting with the lock screen. I can wake it up simply by swiping up on the lock screen. It takes you to where you last left off. Now you can also launch some apps from here. So for example, if we want to launch our web browser, there we go. Now you can also wake it up with your voice. Hi Galaxy. It takes you right to S Voice. Now you can also do things like take a look at your notifications. You can also control your settings from up here. And we'll take a closer look at that a bit later. Let's just wake up and take a look at the main home screen. So we have several home screens here. They give us five by default, but you can add up to seven. Now you can quickly swipe through them just by holding down here. And you can swipe through them that way. Or you can pick as you want which uh, home screen you want to go to. Now when you press the home button, it takes you to the home screen no matter where you are. Uh, and you can also modify this just by pinching in and out. So you can see all of your home screens and you can select which one you want to be your home screen or you can move them around and rearrange them. You can also add your home screens that way or you can trash them. Oops, pinch out and drag and drop them to your trash can. Now we also have our capacitive backlit buttons here. So we have our standard home button, which has multi-uses here. So if we tap the home button, it takes us to the home screen no matter what we're doing. If you tap and hold it, you'll get to the uh, task switcher or app launch or recent apps. So here you can launch anything you've uh, looked at recently. Uh, this also under that uh, task switcher, you have the option to go to Google. So it brings up uh, Google Now. And we're familiar with Google Now, so we're not going to demonstrate that. Uh, we also have our trash can here, so we can delete all of them as we just did. So it closes all of the apps, so now I have no recent apps. Now you can also get to your task manager here. Uh, right now I have no active applications. I can see applications I've downloaded. You can see my RAM manager, uh, storage, and that sort of thing. So you can see a lot of controls just from that menu. Now we also have our menu button here, which is contextual. It depends on what app you're in. Right now I'm on the home screen, but if I was in, for example, Chrome, I'd see a different set of options here. If I tap and hold that, it'll take me to Google Now. So I can tap things like, what's the weather like in New York? It's 43 degrees and overcast in New York. All right. Now, like I said, this also has S Voice. And then to get to S Voice, all you do is double tap the home button. What's the weather like in Rochester, Michigan? Here is the weather for Rochester, Michigan. Now, S Voice will do things like launch apps as well. So I can do this. Launch YouTube. YouTube. It'll take me to the YouTube app and it can also do things like calendaring, timers, that sort of thing. Now with the S Pen, uh, you have some additional functionality with S Voice. So you can now, instead of um, speaking them, you can actually handwrite them in. So all I have to do is tap that and I can start typing them in. So let's say weather. Here is the weather for Auburn Hills, Michigan. 
Now we also have our drop down menu here. So we get our notifications here and this is a familiar Jelly Bean stuff so you can um, for example zoom in and out. You can also act on several options here. So for example I, have, I took a screenshot so I can delete it, edit, or share it. So that's one way of controlling it. Um, now if you swipe down here you also get all of these toggles up here. Now Samsung gives you a ton of toggles. This is the default arrangement but you can change this. Now the standard ones include Wi-Fi, GPS, reading mode which I'll demonstrate, sound, screen rotation, Bluetooth, power saving mode, blocking mode which will block notifications or phone calls or alarms so it doesn't disturb you and you can modify that under settings as well. The sync mode you can turn that off and on and you have multi-windowing which is another feature I'll demonstrate. Uh, you also have your screen brightness slider here and you can set that to auto if you wish and use the ambient light sensor and of course you can clear all your notifications or just swipe them out of the way. Now you also have a quick access control to your settings. Now under settings this is where we can make some modifications to that uh, notification bar. So we're going to go to display to make them and under display we have our notification panel. So if we go to the notification panel you can see we have all of our notification uh, toggles here. So unfortunately we can't just add these and scroll through them, we actually have to replace one of them. So for example the multi-windowing mode I don't really need there uh, but I would like the smart stay option here. So if I drop that to smart stay it bumps it out of the notification panel and now I have a uh, smart stay. So if I swipe down you'll now see smart stay uh, right in the right here. So I can toggle that on and off. Now this does have smart stay technology which we saw debut with the Galaxy S3. Smart stay basically means that um, the tablet using the camera is able to detect the presence of your eyes. So it knows if you're looking at the tablet or not and if it doesn't see your eyes looking at the tablet it will allow the screen to go to sleep. Now as you can see the layout will adjust for orientation, landscape mode or portrait mode and you can see your dock items change position. Now in case you're curious of course you can change these dock items, you can remove them. In fact when you hold you can see we get more control options here. So you can create a new page, you can create a folder or you can remove them. So if you remove them you can do that. And you can also remove widgets that way so you can tap and hold them and remove them or add them to, to a new page. Now when you remove the S Pen you can see you get a new page up here. Uh, which brings you right to the uh, S-Note app which I've demonstrated earlier. So it launches directly into S-Note and you can also wake up the device by removing the S-Pen. So for example if I'm in the locks, if I'm locked, pull out the S-Pen and there you go, it takes you right to the note taking app. And once you reinstall the S-Pen, all of that goes away. Now taking a look at the default home screens, you can see that they've included several apps which they prefer to highlight such as ChatOn which is uh, Samsung's cross-platform chat app. It's kind of like an iMessaging or BBM. Uh, we have Dropbox which they have a partnership with. We have WatchOn uh, which is an app that allows you to search your local television stations. For some reason I can't get it to work. It doesn't seem to be able to recognize where I am right now. Uh, so let's see if it finds me now. Yep, see it doesn't work for me. Uh, we also have our gallery app for accessing our photos. We have the Samsung App Store, so Samsung provides its own app store. And we have the Google Play Store. Uh, to the right of that we have our calendar widget. This is um, uh, Samsung's calendar. Uh, and then we have a blank screen. Uh, to the right or to the left we have Flipboard, which is a widget I need to log into. I haven't set it up yet. But Flipboard basically aggregates all your um, social networks such as Facebook and Twitter and sort of puts it in sort of a magazine viewer. Uh, we also have S Note widget, so basically you can quickly access your note taking app from this uh, widget. There we go, a little slow to launch here. Uh, and now S Note is great, so if I pop out the pen, so there is our pen, so now I can start using the stylus to, for example, start writing. Now what you can do here is change your brush type, you can change the color, so if I want red, if I want a brush here, and I want to change the thickness, I can do that. And so there you go. And you can see that it's also pressure sensitive, so if I press harder it gets a little thicker. Now something you may notice is when you hover the cursor over anything, or hover the pen over anything, you'll get this little cursor, and you'll see these little badges pop up, letting us know what each of these buttons are. There are lots of other features here, so for example I can draw shapes and it will automatically find them for me. So if I just do a square, oh, come on, let's try again, square. Try a more perfect square. You can do a circle. You can even draw a car, which never works out for me. So there you go. Yeah, feel to recognize. No kidding. Uh, and you can also swipe over something to delete it. That's something that also works pretty well. Uh, you can also use functions. Let's do three divided by thirty-two. 
So there you go, it sees it up there, and we're gonna go to insert. Now Samsung has done a lot of interesting things with the keyboard, and one of my favorites is the ability to change the keyboard layout. So, for example, if you're in a tablet mode, this may not be the most comfortable way of typing on a wider screen. So if you pinch in, you have several keyboard layout options. So you can do the floating keyboard, uh, which you can then move around, or you can do the split keyboard, uh, which I really prefer. And this is so I can, and I can also move this around. This allows me to thumb type on the wider tablet. Now you can also swipe on the keyboard to change the cursor position. So if you look at the text right now really closely, you can see my rather light cursor moving around on the text. So that's one easy way to get to your text to edit it. Now you have tons of other options here. So if you tap and hold this, you can get your uh, voice keyboard. This is a test of the voice keyboard period. Now we can also handwrite text just by tapping and holding that and going to the handwriting mode, which I'm in right now. And all I have to do is start writing like you would on a piece of paper. Now this keyboard will also recognize symbols. So you can see um, all I have to do is draw them, percent, star, question mark, exclamation. Now Samsung has also implemented a swipe light keyboard, but you do have to activate it because it's off by default. So all you have to do is tap down here to get to your settings icon here. Now it'll take you to your keyboard settings and you have to enable continuous input. So now if we go back to our keyboard, we can now test it out. There you go. Now another big feature with Samsung is the multi-windowing mode. In order to activate that, all I have to do is tap and hold the back button and it brings up this tray of apps. Now you can move this around. For one thing, you can tap to hide it. You can see we get this continuous tab here, which is always there no matter what you're doing, so you have quick access to it. Works in landscape or portrait mode. Uh, so I have to use tap on that to bring it up. You can also move it around from left to right. Uh, so for example, you can launch any one of these apps. So for example, if we bring up our internet browser, and better yet, let's bring up Chrome. So let's bring up Chrome. So it works with Chrome. Now let's say I wanna do some note taking. So let's go to the S note. We're gonna bring that down here. And you can drop it into the window. So now I have several windows here, although obscured by my keyboard here, but I can uh, resize them here. So I have my browser right here and I have my note-taking app up here. So that means I can look at one app while doing something in the other app. Uh, now, when I tap this bar, you can see that I have several controls here, so I can swap between the windows if I want the note-taking app in the larger window. Let's see, there we go. And if we want it in full screen mode, or if we want to close it, we have that option. So again, just tap that slider, and it goes to full screen mode. Now I'll have to go back to get back to S Note, drop it into viewer here. Now this allows me to do a number of things. So for example, if I'm looking at a website here and I want to copy the, the web address, I can go to uh, copy, so it'll copy it for me. Now I can go to my app here, my note-taking app, and paste it. Uh, so I'll have to just go to my clipboard, I'll see my text here, select that, and it inserts it for me. So this allows me to uh, do several things without leaving one of the apps. Now if you want to change what app is in this window, you can just drag and drop it. So for example, if I want to go to YouTube, Let's go to YouTube here, drop it into the Note app. So I can start watching a YouTube video while browsing the web. So let's say, let's just watch that. And we can continue browsing the web. The confidence to take on changing conditions. Now you can also change what appears on the lock screen. In order to do that, you do have to go to settings. So let's go to settings. And we go to our lock screen panel. And we're gonna change the lock screen options. Uh, so right now we have shortcuts enabled. In order to change that, you just tap on that. It takes you to the options here, and you have to delete one in order to add another. So for example, I want to change this to the Chrome browser, so I'm just going to delete that. Now I have the options to add a different shortcut. So let's go to Chrome, and I can reposition that if I want. So let's put it back to where the browser was. Now if I go to the lock screen, I should have Chrome. I can swipe up. And there we go. Now also under settings, you'll find one of my favorite features um, that I wish Android, you know, the Nexus devices would implement, which is blocking mode. So basically this allows you to change, or allows you to turn off uh, notifications easily. You, of course you can control this directly from the drop down menu up here. As I showed you earlier, blocking mode, so you can turn that off and on. 
Now under blocking mode, you can disable notifications. You can toggle that on and off. Disable alarms, turn that on and off. If you had a phone, you'd have further options. And you can also change at what time of day these turn on. So you can select it to always, or you can select a specific time of day. Now this is pretty familiar to iOS users. Well, which also have this capability. So I'm going to turn that off for now. Now you also have motion controls here. So if you swipe on the screen, that will take a screen grab. So you can see it copied to my clipboard. And actually, if you bring down the drop down menu, you'll see it there. So there it is. So you can delete it. Now under the S Pen panel, we have lots of controls here. So for example, we can turn off the sound it makes when you detach the S Pen. Uh, we can also enable open pop-up notes. So when you remove the S Pen, you'll get a little floating note-taking app, which is omnipresent. So for example, if we press the home button, it stays floating in the background. You can continue taking notes. So for example, if you want to go to my browser here, you can move this around, take a look at the notes. You can even move it a little off screen so it's not completely covering uh, what you're doing. Now you can also turn off AirView. Now AirView is the capability of the S Pen to uh, interact with the screen without actually touching it. So if you hover the nib over anything, uh, you'll see a little cursor. Now some apps are designed to take advantage of this. Uh, so, for example, if you wave it over your photo gallery, you'll see the gallery, you'll see a preview of the photo pop up and that sort of thing. You can also see this in the, under the calendar. Uh, so you'll see your appointments appear when you hover the S Pen over the calendar. Uh, so it's actually a pretty neat feature unique to uh, the type of technology that the Note is using. So let's go ahead and take a look at the apps they've included. So this is a mix of third party Samsung and Google apps. Now you can toggle between apps and widgets. So you can swipe through these pages here or you can use that little slider. You can also see everything you've downloaded. So you can see all the downloaded applications right here. Uh, now, if you go to the app screen, we can take a look at some of them. So we have All Share Play, uh, which is a familiar Samsung app. We also have A Note HD, which I've never seen before. And this is sort of like an Evernote app that integrates uh, everything on your device, such as your calendars, your email, your gallery items, your video, your voice notes. Everything is integrated in here. Paper Artist, which is... Uh, something I've demonstrated before, but it's basically a drawing app. So here you have templates you can draw in, and it's basically meant to be used with your S Pen. So you have lots of controls here. Now we also have the Play Books app, which is kind of interesting here because Samsung has sort of implemented a feature to make this a more pleasant reading device, uh, which I've showed you in this drop-down menu, which is called Reading Mode. So if you have Reading Mode enabled, this only works within the Google Play Books app. Uh, so if I want to disable it, I'll show you the difference. Swipe down, we're going to go to turn off reading mode, and you'll see a slight change in the color tone of the app. So if you look really closely, you'll see that it goes to a more warmer color when you're in reading mode. So it makes it a more uh, comfortable reading experience. Now we also have the standard array of Google apps, including Play Magazines, Play Movies and TV, Play Music, the Play Store. We also have Polaris Office, which is an office suite. It basically allows you to open and edit Office documents such as Word, Excel, or PowerPoint documents. We also have the Peel Smart Remote, which again works with that IR blaster. It's meant to be used in landscape mode. Uh, so you in order to set up, you select your location. So what it's going to do is look for devices that you can set up. So for example, I have a Samsung HDTV, and if I press that, it will turn on my TV. Now the next thing it wants to do is find my TV listings. So first I need to search my location. So it sees AT&T U-verse or Comcast, DirecTV, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of them. I'm an AT&T U-verse customer. I do have a DVR. So now I get a live view of what's on my cable box right now. So instead of flipping through channels to find something or looking at the menu uh, with a listing of shows, I can easily look at this and jump to that channel. So for example, if I want to go to Modern Marvels, I can go ahead and watch on TV and it'll set it to the right channel and I can start watching. You can, you can actually see the uh, channel it's on right now. I also have my uh, controls right here as well. Now Group Play is an interesting app that works across devices that are sharing the same Wi-Fi network. So basically if I start a group play session, I have several options here. I can share a picture, share a document, or share music. So if I go to share a picture, so I can see all my screenshots and I can select specific images I want to use. So let's let's just select this one. And I need to set up a passcode, so I'm just going to do a standard passcode here, done. Uh, so if I go to another Samsung device using the group play app, like this Note 2 here, I can see that I now have the option to join another session. So I can see the device name GTN5110. If I tap on that, I enter in the pass pin, pass or enter pin or whatever. It connects to the device over Wi-Fi. So there you go, we're sharing the same image. So if I want to make some notes here, you can see it appears on the other device. 
Now Samsung also has an interesting video player with some unique features. So for example, they've included a video here we can use for demo purposes. Uh, so we can pop out this video and continue watching it while doing other things. So if you load videos onto your device and use the Samsung video player app, you have this capability. It doesn't work across all video players, just the Samsung video player. Uh, you can tap it to pause it, or you can use the X to uh, close it. If you double tap, it fills the screen. Now something else you'll see here in the upper right corner is if you have DLNA equipped devices on your Wi-Fi network, it will see them. If you tap on that, uh, you'll see the device and you can select the device as the receiver. So you can play back video on that device. Now let's go and take a look at the camera app and there are lots of features here. So you can toggle between video and camera mode. Now when you're in video mode, you can click record, continue recording, and you can actually see that we get a little indicator of how much uh, storage or how much memory we're using, how much storage we're taking up here, as well as the time and duration. But you can also pause the video or pause the recording and continue uh, where you left off. And you can click stop to, con uh, to uh, finish that. Uh, if you go to camera mode, again, same story here. So you have lots of options. So you have shooting mode, so you have a panorama mode. Basically, it's an app that allows you to take a photo, or not an app, but a mode that allows you to uh, take a panorama using this sort of coaching mechanism. We have our filters, we have our exposure value, and we have more options. Again, you can turn G GPS on and off. Uh, you can use the volume key as the zoom slider, so we can zoom in using the vo uh, volume rocker. Uh, Self-portrait on and off, shooting mode, effects, screen mode, exposure values, ISO settings, white balance, resolution, outdoor visibility guidelines, contextual file name, etc. Cetera, et cetera. There's lots and lots of options here. So we get a full featured photo app on a camera that probably could use a little spec upgrade. Now in terms of video quality, this tablet definitely performs, so we get a nice display with deep contrast. It also can handle high def video very comfortably without frame dropping, uh, so I have no problems there. Now for me the big issue really is the speakers. So we have these stereo speakers, but they're very small speakers and they sound kind of tinny. Uh, it's worse when you have the volume all the way up. So let's go ahead and increase the volume. They're not very loud, and the other problem is the sound comes out of one side. So if you're handling the tablet in landscape mode, the sound is a little irritating because it's coming out of only one side of the tablet, and you're likely to cover it with your hands. You have to be really careful not to cover the uh, sound. It's, it completely disappears. Now, overall performance of this tablet is very smooth and silky. This is definitely impressive uh, for a Samsung tablet just because of the... Uh, software overlay over Android, which adds a lot of overhead to the tablet. So there's a lot of features here, a lot of things going on in the background, but this remains a smooth operating experience. So things feel just about right. Uh, Android 4.1 has been applied to full effect here, and 4.2 would even improve that further. Now, a good way of testing this out is by looking at The Verge. So The Verge is a graphically intensive website, and you can see it scrolls through all of that very smoothly. So I can pinch in and out just nice and smoothly so it has no problems with that so if it can handle the verge it can handle most websites now in terms of benchmarking performance if we look at the quadrant performance here you can see that uh, the note 8.0 score is about 5000 versus the 6500 on the note 2 so we're not getting screaming performance out of the note 8.0 a lot of devices now higher end devices are scoring around 8000 on this test so this is kind of a mid-range performing device versus uh, what's out there now now overall display quality is superb and that's particularly useful for reading books and text. This is where I think the iPad mini really struggles. Uh, the uh, resolution of the iPad mini screen is a little too low for reading text comfortably. Now while this isn't retina display, it is better and definitely looks superb. Uh, this is right up there with the Nexus 7 which has an even sharper display. Uh, so I think overall with the combination of superb color and contrast, as well as a fairly sharp display. I think this is a very, very good display, despite the fact it doesn't have really impressive resolution specs. Now, in terms of design, it's kind of interesting to point out the difference between the iPad mini versus the Note 8.0. The iPad mini is probably its most direct competition. Uh, so, for example, you can see that the screen aspect ratio is different here. So you have a more classic 16 by 9 aspect ratio versus the wider and shorter screen of the iPad mini. So you get a little different uh, surface distribution there. Now in conclusion, I'm a big fan of the Note 8.0 because I love mid-sized tablets. I think they're just about perfect. They're more comfortable to hold because they're lightweight, thin, and they're more handable. So, for example, I have large hands here, so this feels very comfortable to me. Um, and it's more portable, so you're more likely to carry this around so you can 
you're more likely to stick this in your coat pocket and possibly your pant pocket if you have large baggy pockets. Uh, but this is definitely more portable than something like an iPad or full-size tablet like the Note 10.1 or the Nexus 10. Those tend to want to stay at home and be used around the house. So with this, you have a little more portability. Now for me, the biggest issue is just pricing. At $399, this is priced like a full-size tablet. Now you could say that this is a mid-size tablet without the compromise, uh, but it's not a real high-spec device. doesn't have a really high-spec screen. So really, the value here is probably in that stylus technology. So if that's worth it to you over the 200 to 330 price dollar, the 330 price range of other mid-sized tablets, then I think this is something you can consider for you. Now I would also consider this just because of the Samsung software. So that Samsung software adds interesting features like that multi-window viewer. So if you want to do multitasking, that's definitely something very interesting here. And with the specs in this device and the software tweaks they've made with Android 4.1, everything seems to work much better than it did with the Note 10.1. So definitely a big fan of the Note 8.0. I'm not sure who would it's for, uh, but if you like the idea of a stylus and if you like a high quality mid range tablet and are willing to pay for it, I definitely think this is something to consider. So that's going to do for me, guys, in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.